I'm Em Chiu-Ming. I'm a software engineer at Google working on TensorFlow performance. Today, I'm very excited to introduce you to our brand new TensorFlow 2 performance profiler. We all like speed, and we want our models to run faster. TensorFlow 2 profiler can help you improve your model performance like a professional player. In this talk, we will first talk about what's new in TF2 profiler, and then we will show you a case study. I'm a performance engineer, and this is how I used to start my day. In the morning, I ran a model and captured a trace of it. I will gather the profiling results in a spreadsheet to analyze the bottlenecks and optimize the model. We often have gigabytes of traces, and the process all of them manually is boring and time consuming. Then, after that, we will run the model again to check for performance. If the performance is quite good, hooray, we have done our job. Go and grab coffee. Otherwise, we will go back to step one, recapture a profile, gather re results, and find out the reason, fix it, and try again. Repeat this iteration by n times until the performance is good. This is a typical day of a performance engineer. Can we make it more productive? The most repeated work here is to gather the trace information and analyze the result. We always want to work smarter. At Google, we find out a way to build tools to automatically process all the traces, analyze them, and provide automated performance guidance. It does intensive trace analysis, learns from how Google internal experts tune the performance and automate it for non-expert users. Here is the thing I'm very excited about. We are releasing this most useful set of internal tools today as a TF2 profiler. The same set of tools in TF2 profiler has been used extensively inside Google, and we are making it available to public. Let me introduce you to the two set. Today, we will launch eight tools. Four of them are common to CPU, GPU, and TPUs. This enables consistent metrics and analysis across different platforms. The first tool is called Overview Page. This tool provides an overview of the performance of the workload running on the device. The second tool is Input Pipeline Analyzer. It is a very powerful tool to analyze the TensorFlow input pipeline. TensorFlow reads data from the files in a pipeline manner, and an inefficient input pipeline can severely slow down your application. This tool presents an in-depth analysis of your model input pipeline performance based on various performance data collected. At the high level, this tool tells you whether your program is input bound. If that is the case, the tool can also walk you through the device and host site analysis to debug which stage of the pipeline is the bottleneck. The third tool we released today called TensorFlow Stats. TensorFlow Stats tool presents TensorFlow op statistics in charts and tables. The last two, the fourth two we released today is called Trace Viewer. Trace Viewer 2 displays detailed event timeline for in-depth performance debugging. We also provide four tools that are TPU or GPU specific. They are all available today on TensorBot. Please check out. Now, let's look at the case study. Let's assume that we are running an unoptimized ResNet 50 model on a V100 GPU. TF2 Profiler provides a number of ways to capture a profile. In this talk, we will focus on Keras callback. To check out other ways of profiling, including sampling and programmatically profiling, refer to TensorFlow Docs for more details. Using Keras TensorFlow callback, we simply need to add an additional line specifying profiling range. The argument profile batch equals to 150 to 160 here indicates we will start to profile from batch 150 to 160. 
run the model, launch TensorBot, and go to the profile plugin. Here's a performance overview. Let's zoom in and look at the overview page. It contains three sections, performance summary, step time graph, and the recommendation for the next step. Let's zoom in to each of them. First, let's look at the performance summary. It shows the average step time and breaks it down into the time spent on compilation, input output, kernel launches, and the communication time. The next is the step time graph. We can see the step time is broken down into compilation time, kernel launch, compute, compute communication as well, and you can see how these breakdown changes over a number of steps. In this example, there's a lot of redness in this chart and indicates it is severely input bound. The next is what I felt most excited about. This is the recommendation provided by our two. It says, your program is highly input bound because 81.4% of the total step time sampled is waiting for input. Therefore, we should first focus on reducing the input time. Overview page also provides a recommendation on which two you should check out next. In this example, input pipeline analyzer and trace viewer are the next two to see. In addition, these two also suggest the related useful resources to check out to improve the input pipeline. Let's follow this recommendation and check out the input pipeline analyzer too. See, this is the host analysis breaking down provided by the two. It automatically detects the most time spent on the data preprocessing. What should we do next? Our two actually tells you what can be done next to reduce the data preprocessing. This is what is recommended by our two. You may increase the number of parallel calls in the dataset map or process the data offline. If you follow the link on the dataset map, you will see how to do that. According to the guide, we change the sequential map to use a parallel calls. We are also not to forget to try the most convenient auto-tune option, which will tune the value dynamically at runtime. After this optimization, let's capture a new profile. Now you can see the redness is all gone in the step time graph and the model is no longer input bound. Checking the performance summary again. Now you get 5x speed up. Overview page now recommends differently. It says, your program is not input bound because only 0.1% of the total step time sampled is waiting for input. Therefore, you should instead focus on reducing other time. Here's an another thing we can do. If you look at the other recommendations, the model is all using 32 bits. If you replace all of them by 16 bits, you can get 10x speed up. This release is just the beginning and we have more features upcoming. We are working on Kira specific analysis and the multi-worker GPU analysis. Stay tuned. We also welcome your feedbacks and please let us know and contribute your ideas. TensorFlow 2 profiler is the tool you need for investigating TF2 performance. It works on CPU, GPU, and TPU. Here's more thing to read, a tutorial, guide, and GitHub source code. There are also two more related talks on performance tuning in this afternoon. They are super excited and don't miss them. Finally, I want to thank everyone who worked on this project. You are all super amazing teammates.